Hi guys, it's Damien, hope everyone's well. In today's video, I wanna give my thoughts on a question that a lot of people ask when they first discover investing. Should I invest or save for a house? Question mark. I've never been a fan of messing about, so let's Dennis. Our survey said. <laughs> In England, the idea of buying a home is embedded into our psyche. It's a rite of passage, a signal that you're an adult and a well-rounded member of society. It's seen as a landmark event in someone's life and pretty much everyone in the UK sees buying a home as an investment. Our obsession with buying homes in the UK is such that we're looked at as odd by our European counterparts. But England is the birthplace of capitalism. Our economy is based on consumption. We are taught spend to make money, speculate to accumulate, buy a house with a small deposit and a big f off mortgage. Two thirds of Brits own their own home. Now, while admittedly this figure decreases as house prices rise, 50% of Germans rent. And the French find our attitude towards borrowing large mortgages, well, startling. But we are the children of the great housing boom. Our ears have been filled with the words of parents who have either seen or benefited from a rise in house prices that made more people rich by accident than Bitcoin. There are 750,000 properties in the UK registered as costing more than a million pounds. And in some Southern areas, 50% of all of the properties are worth more than a million quid. Sometimes it feels like you could have bought any old dump anywhere and held onto it and made money. And if that dump was inside the M25, then right about now you'd probably be retired. Two generations of adults stepped onto the property escalator on the ground floor and rode that sucker all the way to the top, where they were greeted by the squishy comfort of massive amounts of capital appreciation in the form of equity. So understandably, us Brits love property. Because of this constant reminder of massive growth, record prices, low interest rates, increasing rent, stagnant wages, cost of living. Well, in my day, a house only cost 50 quid and now it's worth 600 grand, so why don't you just buy one? Shut up, Carol. Getting to the point of buying your first home in the UK can feel like you're standing on a treadmill, sprinting to the goal of buying a home, frantically trying to get ahead of the price increasing factors before the speed gets too much, you miss your chance and you stack it. So typically us Brits go all in for this goal. Every bit of money that we have spare, we consider money towards buying a house. And the only other real financial goals we have in our life are saving up to go to Ibiza in the summer and paying off a student overdraft. Everything else, is for that goal of buying a house. But then you hear about investing and you are captivated by it. The practice is simpler than you thought and the data when presented clearly seems to suggest that as long as you give it time, the odds of you coming out better off are really good. So much so that you sit there and think, God damn it, why didn't I start investing sooner? Right, that's it, I need to play catch up. I need to go ham at this goal. So here we have a problem. You have this socially ingrained desire to own the roof that's over your head. First is the realization that investing is actually something that's quite simple to do and that you really want to take advantage of as soon as possible so the compounding effects of investing can one day set you free. What do I do? House, invest, invest, house. <sighs> First of all, let's quickly look at the pros and cons of both. Starting with buying a house. When examining the benefits and negatives of property, there are two angles we need to consider. There is the provision of shelter, that basic human need for warmth and security. And then there is a house as an investment, as a means to generate wealth and to support yourself financially. I just want to state at this point that if we define an asset as something that can support you if you lose your job, something that produces income that can pay your bills if your main source of income stops, then the house that we live in isn't an asset. I understand that the house can increase in value and that you can use that money by refinancing it or selling it or whatever. But from a pure perspective of the house paying your bills if you lose your job, then the home that we buy to live in isn't an asset. If anything, it could be called a liability because if we lose our job, the house that we live in could sink us financially. So when we ask the question, should I invest or should I save for a house? What we're really asking is, should I place money on the markets or should I continue to save up to buy my very first home? Which is a vastly different question to, should I invest in stocks and shares or should I invest in buy to let property? So for today's video, I wanna make that distinction because I'm gonna answer the question from the perspective of buying your first home to live in. So taking away from the whole house prices don't stop rising thing and the idea of renting this house out for now, 
and look at a house as merely a form of shelter, a modern day cave. It keeps us warm and provides us security. And for this reason, it makes sense that anyone should look to secure a cave of their own. And from a financial perspective, renting caves continues to get more expensive, with mortgages here in the UK typically being a lot cheaper than renting. And once the mortgage is paid off, plain sailing. But on the flip side, when buying your first home, there's the consideration of the huge deposits, expensive legal fees, and ultimately the commitment of maintaining that mortgage. If you're renting a property and something bad happens and you can't afford to rent it anymore, you can just leave, walk away, you know, move in with your family or rent a cheaper place. But if you lose your job and you can't pay your mortgage, the consequences can be dire. But it's my opinion that everyone in the UK should have a baseline financial goal to have at least one fully paid off property by the time they retire. So that you can relieve the pressure on your investments. Let's look at it this way. If you hit retirement and you are still renting, and let's say the rent is a thousand pound a month, you're gonna need 300,000 pounds in investments at a withdrawal rate of around 4% a year to produce that 1,000 pounds each month just to pay rent. Whereas if you have a fully paid off property and have 300,000 pounds worth of investments, you're producing 1,000 pound a month pretty passively. You don't have to worry about spending that on rent. That can be just for you to potter about and do your thing. There's lots of pros and cons here, but I think the one we should focus on is that it's sensible for everyone to aim to have at least one paid off property before retirement. And the quicker you start that process, the quicker you clear the mortgage. When it comes to investing, I could sit here all day and spew facts at you about why investing is good for your financial future. But in light of today's question, there's only really one thing that we need to understand. The sooner you start investing, the easier and cheaper it becomes. On screen are the amounts needed to be invested each month at a rate of 9%, which is the average rate of return of the stock market. In order for you to become a millionaire by 60, if you start in your 20s, 30s, and 40s. Delaying investing even just a few pounds today could cost you hundreds if not thousands of pounds at the end of your investment journey. So we need to buy a property as soon as possible so we can pay it off before we retire, but we also need to be investing as soon as possible so we can benefit from compounding. So ultimately, what do I think we should do? When you ask the question, should I invest or buy a house, your mindset is at a place where you're trying to get on the ever-increasing escalator that is UK property with one eye on the fact that every day that goes by is one step closer to older age and one more wasted opportunity to benefit from the compounding effects of the stock market. But flip that on its head. I showed you how someone who starts investing young can make serious amounts of cash in the long run, but don't see that as a negative pressure to get started today. Realize the beautiful truth that even small amounts of money given enough time can have dramatic impacts on your life. When it comes to getting old, time is against us. When it comes to investing, time is our greatest ally. I've shown in a previous video how if we examine historical data, people who have invested over a 10 year period or more have typically done very well. But I also showed how day to day investors are essentially just flipping a coin. When it comes to buying a house and you have thousands of pounds sat there for a house deposit, an obvious thought process is, well, I'll just invest this money in the stock market. It can be really tempting to see everything going up and think, well, if I just put this money into the FTSE 100 for a week, oh, I would only invest my house deposit funds if I was not looking to buy a house for 10 years or longer. But let's face it, most of the people watching this video are gonna have an aim of buying a house in quicker than 10 years. It's not worth risking your house deposit on the markets because things can go bad and they can go bad real quick. And it's only those people who need the funds there and then who are forced to sell at those points who have to lock in those losses. You need to see the two pots of cash as different. One pot is to buy your cave. That is its only purpose, to secure your future so your investments don't have to spread too thin. Your investments are to support your lifestyle, for you to do things with, not to just keep the lights on. If it was me personally, I'd be saving up for my first home inside of a lifetime ISA or a LISA. That way I benefit from the 25% top up that the government gives me, which is a better rate of return than the stock market anyway, and it's guaranteed. And the restrictions on taking money out for either buying your first home or being 60 is a lovely little barrier preventing me from blowing the money on a Saturday night. And then assuming I already had a couple of months worth of emergency funds set aside, I would then invest anything I had spare, be it a pound or a thousand, it doesn't matter. All that matters at this stage is getting some skin in the game and getting that big stock market snowball of yours rolling. And once you've established the habit of investing every month, and now you own a home, what is stopping you from putting that house deposit every month 
into stocks and shares. Nada. When I was a kid, I used to get a plate of food and eat everything one item at a time. Saving the best till last, I would eat all my veg, then whatever carb was on the plate, then the main event at the end. I just want to point out now as an adult, I've come to realise that saving the best thing till last is kind of pointless. Surely you want the first taste in your mouth to be the best thing. But anyway, when it finally dawned on me I could eat all three things at once, or even together, it changed my life. You don't need to be six-year-old Damo eating up your financial goals one at a time. You can have it all. You can save for a house, retirement, holiday and new teeth all at the same time if you like. Prioritise those goals. Set a target for when you want to achieve them by and then divide the amount you need by however many months it is until that target date and then just be disciplined with yourself on a monthly basis. On payday, make sure the first thing you do is put that money to one side and then ensure you're using any tax efficient accounts to maximise the effects of your saving. So a lifetime ISA for buying a house and a stocks and shares ISA for any investing that you're doing. You should probably have your main financial goal as to secure a property and ultimately pay it off before you dip into your investments. As just like the emergency fund that I covered in another video protects your investments when you have an emergency, a paid off property protects your investments by meaning that you require a smaller part of cash at the end to maintain your standard of living. They're all separate financial goals, but together they support each other. Don't beat yourself up at this stage that you're not contributing the maximum amount that you would like to to each of your investment strategies. You'll get there. For now, just be proud of yourself that you're saving for a home inside a tax efficient LISA account and the government's giving you a free 25% top up as a result. And each and every month, you're increasing your stake in some of the world's biggest businesses that you are now an owner of, even if that's just a few quid a month at this stage. What a boss you are. Huh. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Just a quick one before we go guys. The latest giveaway and the winners of the last one has been announced on my Instagram, at Damien Talks Money. I wanted to post a video on here, but I became aware of certain YouTube policies that mean that they could not be happy about the giveaway. Let's put it that way. And the last thing I want is to be shot. Our survey said. <laughs>